Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. And the movie that we review today is Let Me In, a uh, drama, horror, kind of love story-ish vampire movie. Before we get into the review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, join the madness, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, The Works. There's also a Discord link in the description box down below. Click on that. Share some ideas, share your thoughts. So let's get into the numbers of Let Me In. Critics rate this film an 8.8 .8 out of 10, while audiences rate this film a 7.6 out of 10. The budget of this film was $20 million, and they boxed off its back $24.1 million, which I kind of am thinking like the reason why it boxed off is very little might be because that this film is a remake of the film Let the Right One In. It's a Swedish film. I don't know what year it came out, but it's definitely a remake of that. So that could be why the box office numbers are low. This film was very uh, attention grabbing, very good on the storytelling and like with the emotions and everything. It was able to explain how the little boy was having a troubled childhood dealing with like bullies and his parents divorcing and how that was affecting his like views on life and everything so with all of that going on and just with the emotions of all the other events transpiring around him it was just written so so well when it came to this film and i just loved how this film was written that's where i want to give the director matt reeve some props because so far every film that i've seen that he's made i've really enjoyed everything that i've seen from him so far kind of going back into like the emotion of the film uh the mysterious and creepy like ambience of the film and like how they were able to overlay uh, cheerful soundtracks over creepier tragic imagery. It's great. Like, I don't know how they did it, and it makes me want to, like, attempt a shot at doing something like this, but I know how difficult it can be to tell a story with so many genres and so many emotions going on all at once. Seeing that on screen for a film like this is kind of like, again, like a breath of fresh air when it comes to a movie like this. It's just, it's done so well. The vampire little girl, played by Chloe, her acting performance was perfect in this film. I loved the fact that she portrayed this character the way she did. She made it creepy, she made it emotional, she made you like feel for her, but also be very fearful of her at the same time and realize her troubles as well as she's trying to make friends with this little boy. I've actually seen this film before, but it's been several years since I've seen it. I was, at, I was at a younger age when I was watching it, so I didn't really understand it. Seeing it now, I understand so much more about it. The method of the uh, collecting of the blood that the father of the little girl was very interesting on how he would go about doing it. It was also it was also very interesting seeing how he was kind of getting tired of doing it or how he was getting very sloppy about going about it. Like you can tell that it's just emotionally draining him for doing it for a very long time and time and being able to take care of a girl like this with very high maintenance and it pretty much came down to a point where he had messed up for the last time and got to a, uh, a car crash with one of the uh, victims he was trying to get, which the camera angle of that crash was... I really enjoyed that camera angle. But going back to the car crash, like, it's just the emotion of, like, the father figure just finally saying enough's enough, and he just was tired of doing it and he allows her to kill him and just take him out of the equation. Let's kind of go into some of like the choices of like how these characters look and the prosthetics. Uh, the prosthetics, uh, especially for the uh, father figure after being uh, chemically burned on the face and the chest, it was very hard to look at but it was, it looked really good on screen. Like you can tell that he was a burn victim. The other thing I really wanted to point out on like the looks of the characters, I couldn't really tell if it was green, like fluorescent green or like white, but I really liked the choice of color when it came to the little girl's eyes when she went into vampire mode. I want to say that it kind of followed recent vampire lore at the time, but it was also like a very interesting choice with that kind of like bright color that they chose. It really stood out. I also found it very weird how like every time she went in vampire mode, her eyebrows disappeared. I didn't like the bullies because they were being dickbag bullies, but they also did their job in the film. 
they were kind of over the top at times, but it was just, no. But later on we find out why the main bully is being bullied because his older brother is bullying him. So it's kind of like a uh, chain reaction when it comes to that kind of stuff. New vampire lore was learned in this film, or uh, not in this viewing, but my first viewing of seeing it. Uh, I did not know that when you when a vampire comes to your house, you have to verbally say for them to come into the house, or something horrible happens to them. With uh, Chloe's character, she starts draining blood out of every orifice of her body. So that was interesting to learn that in this film. I thought it was very odd for her voice to get like deepened and like more manly sound when she got angry. Like it kind of adds to the more creepiness of the film, but I thought it was weird. I didn't really like it too much, even though it was only shown in one scene. Two more things about the film. It wasn't really bad, like I Frankenstein bad or Apollo 18 bad or like any other CGI bad film, like the Resident Evil series. But the CGI in this film looked a little bit off. Like whenever she would go into a complete crazy vampire mode, it looked like she was an animated spider monkey on screen, just hopping around, jumping around and everything. And every time that she went in vampire mode and the CGI was needing to be used for her character, it was in a, it was in very dark and like secluded areas of like the, the scene being shot on screen. So at least they kept it hidden for the most part, but it just looked a little off and a little weird. And my last pro is the pool scene, uh, especially when uh, she comes back to save the little boy from pretty much being drowned in the pool by the bullies and the bully's older brother. Like how that transpired and them transitioning into like uh, going on a train and, and leaving the town and escaping together. Like all of that was just tied together in a very tightly nice little bow. Even though everything that transpired in this film was completely fucking wrong, but it's still written very well. So now it's time to get into my final rating of Let Me In. This film kind of surprises me because it's not the kind of film that I would want to watch. It's kind of like how I said about Peggy Sue Got Married. It's very drama filled. It's very like love story and kind of filled. I just made that word up. And it's labeled as a horror movie, but there's not too many horror elements in the film. There's like suspense and like horror elements where there needed to be horror elements, but it's woven together enough to make it entertaining and attention grabbing and it makes you sit down and just pay attention to what's going on and it's just paced together so well. It's a fantastic story for a movie. So my final rating for this film is going to have to be a 7.8 out of 10. That may sound a little contradicting when it comes to me talking so much good about this movie and very little bad stuff, but it's just, it's not the type of film that I would want to go for out of my, out of my way and go see it, but I will admit when there's golden treasure in front of me, I will admit to it that it's a good movie. Those are my final thoughts on Let Me In. The next time you shall see me, I have more movie reviews, more projects, October Horror Fest, all that fun stuff that I've been saying the last couple videos. But this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review, and I am signing out. Let me in.